let's talk about plugins. Okay, so let's get into how to set up plugins on your tracks within Reaper. And there's also one key feature that Reaper has with it that makes setting up plugins in all of your work so much faster. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in a blank project in Reaper. Nothing too spectacular about that. I'm going to make some tracks really quick, and I'm going to throw some random sounds onto some of these tracks. So I'll just scroll around and find some stuff, and then I will cut away and let you know when we're all set up. Okay, so I picked three completely random sounds for these three different tracks, and I'll just play them for you so you know what they are. Cool, so we got book page turning. this crazy drone and what sounds to be like some metallic foley. So nothing too crazy about these, but what I'm gonna do is open up my mixer, which is mapped to X for me, but you can map it to whatever you want. And you can see we have these kind of rows that we can put various plugins into. You can see as I mouse over them, they turn kinda lighter gray from darker gray using this default Reaper 6 theme. So I can click any one of these spots and I can add a plugin. So it'll bring up our whole plugin list and on the left you can see the various creators of plugins, you can see the various categories of plugins, so reverbs and compressors and all that sort of stuff. And you can see different formats as well, like audio units or VST or VST3 and the stuff that's made by the Reaper company Cocos itself. So whatever it may be, you can find all your plugins right here. So nothing too different from most any other DAW out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a built-in Reaper made plugin onto this first track. And if you want to find all the plugins that come with Reaper, they live within this folder here, this category here where it says Cocos, which I think is how you say it. But I'm just going to add a compressor to it. So it's going to be called Recomp. So I just click that Recomp, I hit Add, and just like that, we have a compressor with all of our standard compressor sort of settings. Now we're not going to get into how to mix or what plugins do what within this series that's way beyond the scope, but just know that this is how you add plugins to your various tracks and you can do that for any track using the exact same process. Now that that compressor has been added, maybe I'm going to add one more plug into this, maybe a pitch shifter, so I'm going to use the re-pitch. Cool. So now I have a pitch shifting plugin thrown on there, so let's like pitch it down and I'm going to set the compressing settings. So maybe I'll make the wet 100%. I will set the threshold to be a lot lower. So I'll just hit play on this pitch down book turning sound. Great. It sounds terrible. Fantastic. Let's pitch it down more. Great. So let's say I like these two plugins and I like the setup that they're in and I want to copy them to other tracks. So what I can do simply to copy these plugins to other tracks is just click one, left click and drag, and it'll automatically copy those plugins across the way. So I can copy and paste these plugins very easily just by clicking and dragging them to other tracks. I'm gonna hold down option to click and delete these as well. So option click deletes plugins. So I just click any of these places to add or click and drag to copy paste and option click to get rid of them. And I can also reorder these plugins. So if I want to change the order of these plugins, because right now it goes from a compressor to a pitch shifter and the flow does matter, I can change the spots between these two by clicking and dragging the compressor underneath this pitch shifter. And just like that, they swap positions. And I can add a third plugin just to make that even more clear. So let's add in the Reaper verb, which is called reverb. <laughs> get it? Reverb. So I can just click and drag each of these plugins and they will change the order based on where I click and drag each of these plugins to. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple, nothing too crazy about that. Now, if I want to move a plugin, let's say I don't want to copy paste this plugin, I just want to move it over. Maybe I put it on the wrong spot or something like that. What I want to do is I want to hold option and click. So if I'm holding option while dragging and clicking and left dragging and letting go, that's going to move the plugin, but it's not going to copy paste it. It's just going to move it from track to track without copying and pasting while I'm holding option. Now let's say I want to bypass a plugin. So I don't want to delete it. I just want to bypass it and turn it on and off so I can hear the difference. Well, that I can just shift click each of these plugins and you can see that the name turns orange, which means it's bypassed. So if I shift click, I can unbypass and re-bypass 
any of these plugins. Now let's say I want to copy and paste the same plugin onto the same track that it's on. Let's say I want more versions of this pitch shifter on the same track using the same parameters. I want to copy and paste this pitch shifter onto its same track. Well, I can't just click and drag. That won't copy paste it like it would to another track. But I can hold down Command and that will allow me to copy and paste these plugins multiple times into the track itself. And now you'll see we have this kind of arrow showing us that, oh, there are more plugins kind of lower down. You can add as many as you want. You can just use the scroll wheel to go up and down to see all of the various plugins that you have. So I can just keep adding these over and over and over again. And now we have all these pitch shifters with a reverb and a compressor, and I can scroll up and down to see all those various plugins. So I'm gonna hit play, I'm curious. Can't even hear it. It's so low pitched, I can't even hear it. That's fantastic. Okay, so we covered some basics, but there's still more to come, but not before we get some tea with my good boy Thane. Okay, now that we're back from tea time, there are two more things that I want to show you when it comes to plugins. And that's where uh, some of the special bits of Reaper come into play. So I'm going to delete all of these plugins just to make sure we're back to normal. Now, here's a really cool feature that Reaper has that I don't see any other DAWs doing, but I could be wrong. But I really, 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 really love this. So let's say I click one of these empty spots and you'll see all the plugins come up. So let's say I use the compressor a lot. And I want to insert that onto a track using a shortcut every single time instead of having to click it. Well, Reaper allows us to add shortcuts to any plugin we want so that we just hit a key command and it inserts that plugin onto that track when we just hit a key command. So I'm going to right click the plugin that I want to add a shortcut for, then go to create shortcut. Now, when this window comes up, I can just type in a shortcut that I want to have associated with this plugin, just like I would any action. So I'm going to do Option Shift Control C, but you can do whatever you want. I'm going to hit OK. And now when I click one of these other tracks or any track really and hit Option Shift Control C, a compressor gets made on that track and I can actually keep hitting Option Shift Control C and it keeps making compressor after compressor after compressor on that track, which is pretty cool. So I can just had a compressor to any one of these tracks just by hitting a quick key, key command so it makes things so, so, so much faster. Now, let's say I want to add that same compressor across all three of these tracks at the same time. Well, I can do that. I can click one, hold down shift, click the last one so all three are highlighted, and then hit option shift command C, and I'll add this compressor across all three tracks all at the same time. Makes things so, so, so much faster. Now there's one last plugin related thing I wanna show you, and that is that you can actually insert plugins onto these blocks, these audio files themselves. So not on the track, but just on each individual, what they're called is items. So Reaper calls these kind of blocks of sound or MIDI or whatever it may be, items. Other DAWs call them regions or clips or things like that. Reaper calls them items. So any of these items can have their own individual effects associated with it. So for example, I could have two sounds on this middle track here, and this one on the right can have reverb, compression, and pitch shifting, and this one on the left can have nothing. So you can have individual effects associated with any one of these items themselves. So let me show you how to do that. So you want to bring up a window to help you do this. And I'm going to just show you how to make an action for that. So I'm going to go to my actions menu, which for me is question mark, and I'm going to hit item effects. I'm typing in item effects. And there is a setting or an action that you can bring up called show effects chain for item take. And I have that map to shifty, you can map it to whatever you want. But it's called show effects chain for item take. So basically, if I click one of these items and I hit Shift E, it's going to bring up a window just like earlier with all of our plugins. And maybe I'll put a reverb on there. And now there's a reverb associated with just this item here. It's not on this item. And it's not on the track itself, as you can see, but there is reverb on this item here.
So I can add reverb to just that and no other thing itself. And you can tell when certain items have certain effects on them by zooming in. And we set that up in the last video. And you can see that there's a green effects button right here above the item itself. And if I click that, it'll show me all the effects I have on that item itself. And you can also see a preview of that right here in the file name itself. It says reverb negative 8.5 dB, but you can see that this one has reverb built into it. Now, one thing I wanna warn you about is with those shortcuts we set up earlier, if I click one of these items and hit our shortcut for that compressor that we set up, Control Shift Option C, it's actually gonna add the compressor to the item I have highlighted, not the track itself. So be careful with that. If you want to add the compressor to the track itself, make sure you're not highlighting any items. Just click out anywhere. So don't click on any of these items. Just make sure you click in some gray space. Then click the track you want to put the compressor or whatever shortcut keyboard command plugin you have set up and hit that command and then it'll add that plugin to the track itself. So if I have the item highlighted, it'll add the plug in, in this case, the compressor to that item. And if I have the track highlighted with no item highlighted, it will add it to the track. All right, that's it for today's video. Hit like, subscribe, comment, all the stuff that YouTubers tell you to do. And if you're interested in working in this field full time as a professional freelancer or AAA at a big company, either or, then sign up for my newsletter because that's where I share all my latest advice on how you can break into the industry, get paid, negotiate for projects, all that good stuff. And I also share a bunch of free sounds with you for people who are signed up on that newsletter. And people who are on the newsletter get access to two free courses that teach you how to network, get paid, and kind of find your way into the industry. So sign up for that, and I'll see you next time.